Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. So I'm back from my little mini vacation. Uh, 3,000 miles round trip. Wow, I need a vacation from my vacation. <laughs> but I went to see my niece get married up in New York. And uh, it was a fun trip, all in all. On the way, I passed by and visited a subscriber in New Jersey. Spent the day with him, having problems with his X-Tool. We got that working. Uh, X-Tool, apparently, the neural uh, versions... Uh, of the D1 now use a CH341 driver instead of a CH340. So we got that figured out. He's back online again. Uh, he wound up giving me a, a <laughs> an X-Tool D1 with a 20 watt laser. So uh, a big thank you uh, out to you, Bill. Bill Bonham in New Jersey. And uh, I brought that one back to the shop. Not, not a big fan of the X-Tool, but... Um, I think I have a good charity that that one's going to wind up going to in about a month or two. But anyway, today's video is a maker video, and we got a file uh, from one of my subscribers, Federico Folletto in Italy, sent us this wonderful coffee uh, server, and it's just awesome. <laughs> I love it. So you've got uh, room for eight coffee cups around the top. And then in here, you've got room for your sugar, your stirrers, your creamers on the other side. Nice little uh, holder, uh, well put together. It's supported from underneath, so uh, it won't come apart by lifting it. Uh, very nice design. He designed this, and he's given, he gave this file to me for free. He's giving it to you for free. <laughs> so thank you, Federico. This is really an awesome file. Oh, and... I did find some. Now, the original file that he sent me, I believe, was for espresso. Um, so I'm making this into a coffee station instead of espresso. And in order to do that, uh, I had to make the holes larger because the holes were so small. Still, it's a six ounce uh, cup that I found on Amazon and a coffee cup, which is perfect for barbecues. And it actually matches the wood. So we've got, you know, the same color. So they, they look good together. Now this one, Amazon made a mistake. And they, they put the wrong, or actually the seller made the mistake, put the wrong measurement. So this one does not fit in the hole, unfortunately. But what I've done is really don't want to go less than six ounces on the coffee cup. This is like the perfect after dinner cup of coffee. So what I did was uh, I redesigned the file again. And I'm about to uh, burn one of these off as well with the right size hole so that these cups fit about three quarters of an inch down into the hole. So that's been fixed. <laughs> the file that I have for download is fixed. So uh, this is just going to be a quick video today. I'm going to show you how I cut this file out on the Ortur Laser Master 3. So, uh, Let's get started. Let's take a look at it in Lightburn. Okay, so here we are in Lightburn, and uh, what I've done is I've redesigned this file. As I said in the intro, I have changed the size of these openings so that they fit the coffee cup that I got off of Amazon, and there is a link. And if you come over here, if you download the Lightburn file, and you come over here to File Show Notes, it'll actually open when you first open the file. Uh, this gives the credit to Federico Fletto of Italy, and it also tells you that this file was edited by me for use with 12 by 12 by 8 inch or 3 millimeter, 300 by 300, which is 12 by 12 uh, wood for 6 and 6 ounce coffee cups. And I've gone ahead and put those links. They'll be in the description below the video, but they're also in the project notes so that you'll always have them. And now with that out of the way, this is just my frame, my 12 by 12 tool path. As you can see here, it will not burn. Uh, I don't have to show it if I don't want to, but I just wanted you to see that there's that tool path right there. And I've got two layers here. I've got the black layer and I've got the red layer. So if we take a look, if I right click on the black layer, these, this is the speed and power that is going to need to be changed. And this is everything on the red layer. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Down here on the bottom right, I've got my library. And you can see here, this is the Ortur Laser Master 3. 
um, I've put together this library from their parameters. I converted it to a CLB file. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to Basswood. We're going to go to Engrave, and we're going to go 3 millimeter down here. We need the Engrave, and we need the Cut. Right now, I'm going to click on the Engrave layer right here. And I'm going to do uh, an Engrave Dark on that. I'm going to assign that to the layer. And that is assigned at 7400 speed, millimeters per minute, and 100% power. And then I'll come to the line, and I'll go to the cut layer, and I'll assign that, and that is 500 and 100. Now, I did find out that I need to edit this cut layer and bring this down to 425, because I did have a few little pieces that stuck on there that I didn't like. So now with it edited, I'm going to assign it to that layer there. So now we have the right speed, 425 and 100. Uh, the video that you'll see of the actual circles here, um, that one was done at 500 and it was hard to uh, get out. So uh, I did change it on the second part of the video. And actually the first one was this one over here. So this was the first and th these pieces were hard to get out. So that's when I decided to change it to 425 for this one. And then that, that worked out perfectly well. So um, there's everything right there. These are all the pieces. What I like is that this handle right here slides up through this slot. So the support is all right here and here. You don't have to worry about it coming apart. I did go ahead and I made these slots in here a little bit uh, looser than the original file and only because uh, Frederico didn't use glue he wanted it to be a snug fit um, I prefer to use the glue I want I'd rather it be a little bit looser fit and I use my CA glue and I think that works really well gives it a nice strong weld to all the parts so uh, I did loosen it up a little bit feel free to edit the file to, at your discretion however you want it um, I did go ahead and create an art library, as you see here, coffee holder. This art library will be available on my forum, as, as well as the Lightburn file. And I will have a link below the description for a direct download of the art library and the Lightburn file. Uh, I think I'll put a zip file down there that you can download directly from the show more section of the video. Some people are in a big hurry and they'd rather just click that rather than visit the forum. I don't know why, but uh, the forum has so much good information on there and so many downloads. I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to come to the forum. But for those people who don't want to, there will be a link below to a zip file that will contain both the Lightburn file and the art library. So with that said, let's get started on that first burn. So really quickly, um, this is the Ortura Laser Master 3. The review will be coming soon on this one, so you can look for that shortly. Okay, well, let's take a look see what we get, what we got. I was hoping everything was going to drop out, but it has not. Um, it's pretty close. <laughs> not nearly close enough, though. I'm going to have to do a little work with my exacto uh, tool and maybe just make a little bit of changes uh, slow this down just a bit as you can see I can I can get the pieces out but I don't like to take them out this way if I don't have to um, I would much prefer to uh, go ahead and just have them drop straight out like that one did right there um, this one is going to need a little bit of work with the X-Acto tool, it looks like. Um, there are a couple spots, like right here, that are kind of hard to get to. No, maybe not. I might be able to get all of this done just by snapping it out. But like I said, I would much rather if everything just fell out the way it's supposed to. Um, so I will go ahead and change that setting. Uh, in the library and just uh, lower the speed by just maybe a hundred millimeters 
uh, per minute or so. But as you can see, they're all pretty nice clean cuts. So that's that's the good thing. So there, there is my first part. And I guess I don't have to use the X-Acto knife after all. Except maybe to clean up an edge here or there. And there we go. A uh, slight adjustment, and you're always going to need to make adjustments, you know, based on the wood moisture and the temperature and all that kind of good stuff. So it was pretty close. Pretty close is good enough for me. I'll make the adjustment in my library, and we'll go from there. All right, so this is part two. I've lowered the power to uh, 425, and let's see what we get. That's much better. <laughs> That's This is how I would expect the pieces to come out pretty much on their own. And I think that is going to be the right speed for the 3 millimeter cut is 425. And there's still a little bit of grab in here, but that was much better all in all. So 400 to 425. I think 425 was just fine. And it did a nice job. Look how clean the uh, cut is. I know that's kind of hard to see, but it is a perfectly clean cut. I am using the Diwali Air Assist. Let me turn that down. And the cuts are absolutely gorgeous on this. Here's maybe a better example of seeing the actual cut itself. It is just clean as a whistle. Did a great job. All right, so real quickly, um, I wanted to show you how I line this up. Um, if you see, the laser is in absolute coordinates. So what I did was uh, I've got this, my framing square, in the direct center. If you look up here, move to center of page, that's exactly where it is. Nothing happens when I click it. So this is directly centered on the workbed, and I know exactly where that is on the laser as a matter of fact as well so that's why i like using absolute coordinates so all i have to do here is delete this one and then select this one and actually we need to select all of these and just move it to the center just like that and you'll see that it fits perfectly on that piece of wood now i don't need to frame it or anything because i've already i already know exactly where that framing square is right here on the workbed so i just position my wood and i hit start and that's it so i just wanted to point that out that's how easy it is to uh, switch between them when you use a framing square like i have right here well there you go uh, quick and easy video today something i'm not really famous for <laughs> you all know that already if you've subscribed to the channel and been watching my other videos but i just love the way that that this came out now, I'm going to love it even more when I get the new one, when I get the right holes made for this size coffee cup, you know. But this is just such a great idea. It's so, it's simple, it's easy to do, and it's extremely functional. Uh, and that's one of the things that, you know, I appreciate is getting something that's functional, easy to do and functional. And I just love this because everything is contained here in one little portable serving tray. And that's what I like most about it. And if you have a lot of backyard gatherings or gatherings of any kind, you know, my son lives right next door. We, he has gatherings in his backyard. We have them in ours. We barbecue. We do lots of stuff outside. And this is just great when you've got six or eight people over, and especially with the little disposable cups that match the wood. <laughs> um, I think it... It just looks nice. It's a great presentation. It's a simple project. I just love it. Uh, thanks again, Frederico. This is just a wonderful, wonderful project. And you can, you know, take this to the next level if you wanted to. You could paint it first before you do the engraving and the cutouts. Um, you know, you can do whatever you want to it. But I happen to like the natural wood look of it. I think it's a, a, a great, great little project. And I love the idea that all of your condiments go in these two little trays right here. Uh, you know, you've got your sugar and your and your stirs and your uh, your little uh, creamer packets or whatever. 
uh, I think it's just a, a wonderful idea. Or, or you could always put creamer, if people use milk, into a cup and put that in here as well. So, um, great project, easy to do. Uh, I'm sure that there's going to be hundreds of these all around the world soon. <laughs> and I think I'm going to also include the original file, which uh, was Federico's, uh, I believe it was a cappuccino um, port uh, portable carrier. Because you know the whole the holes were quite small. It looked like maybe maybe three or four ounce uh, cups. So I'm going to include that file as well in the uh, zip in the zip file that I put down below the video here, so that you can get everything. You can get the cappuccino one. You can get the coffee, the portable coffee holder, and you can get the art library. So I'll have the two light burn files. Uh, I'll put those in legacy mode for those people who have older versions of light burn so that you can open those too and i will also include the art library so you'll have all of those things put together and uh, i think a lot of people are really going to enjoy this little project simple but enjoyable and practical and i love it so <laughs> i hope you all like it as well uh, quick easy uh, tutorial today on how to make your own portable coffee server I hope you enjoyed this this video and as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And as always, I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.